Welcome to Your Mental Breakdown, the podcast where you get to follow along with the client in real therapy sessions. And you'll hear two licensed psychotherapists. That's us. Breaking it down afterwards. So you get a look behind the curtain. In this pre-coronavirus episode, we talk about fires, mountains, Coachella, raging against the machine, who the hell is Lizzo, and bubblegum. In the session, we explore guilt, finding a way to be yourself authentically, and getting your feelings out through writing. In the breakdown, we'll talk about organizing thoughts, effective communication, and knowing your feelings and yourself. In the meantime, you can join our Facebook group by going to Facebook, searching for your mental breakdown, and looking for the group and joining it. We'll be popping on there to connect with you directly, and Doug will be doing a weekly live deep dive into stuff that comes up from the week's episodes. Oh, yeah. Stick around. Welcome. I am Doug Friedman. I am Meredith Levy. And this is Your Mental Breakdown. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Uh, How are your allergies treating you? You know, there's a lot of pollen in the air right now. Yeah. And there's been a lot of fires. That's true. So, depending on when they're listening to this, it doesn't actually matter. (laughs) There are almost always fires. Lately, California is just burning. That's right. It's a travesty. Yeah. Thank you, firefighters out there. Not to mention Burning Man. (laughs) There are people that plan year round for what they're going to wear, what they're going to do, what they're going to cook, what their camp is going to be like. There are. And you know what? I've heard it's a very special thing. I've never been. Hmm. So, what I will say, you guys. Yes. Do you know? I feel like I shouldn't tell anyone, even though you're all going to find out. What? Rage Against the Motherfucking Machine is getting back together for Coachella this next year. Okay. No one cares? You don't care? Uh, I'm biased, I guess. What? I, I'm I, so excited. Yeah. It's been like 20 years. I saw them at Lollapalooza. How old am I? In LA. That's how old I am. Yeah, I you, they played with the Beasties a bunch, so I used to yes, see them all the time. Yes, that's where I saw them, with the Beasties at Lollapalooza. And the Palladium, they played there together. Oh, so good. I yeah. know, but I want to see them. As yeah. much as I really don't want to go to Coachella. But I know that this <laughs> year, my niece and nephew, I told them this year they could go to Coachella, so I'd have to go anyway. Oh, I know. Chaperone or be there partying alongside them? Both. <laughs> They're going to be 15 and 16, duh. Wow. I know. So Molly... Ew. <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> they went to Flognaw last night. Ooh, ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. How are I heard they have really good hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> oh, it's not the new French restaurant? No, dude. It's like a big old hip hop show at the Dodger Stadium. Really? Yeah. I am so out of it. You are? Yeah. It's. <laughs> Doug just asked me who Lizzo was. Right. I don't, I didn't know. I know. Like there's this woman everybody's talking about. And I hear that they're great, but I've never heard them. Her. Her. Yeah, right. Um, So what's going on? Well, let's see. Still homeless. (laughs) Still looking for a place to live. All right. You looking to buy another place? No, I'm just going to rent one for a while. Yeah. I just can't deal (laughs) with buying one. Too permanent? No. (laughs) (laughs) she said with force i'm not afraid of a commitment doug right (laughs) um it's just a whole thing i just want to rent one i want to rent a house that i couldn't afford to buy you know what i mean (laughs) sure yeah oh yeah i used to have dreams about that like some of the really nice houses with the pool and like the vaulted ceilings and all that stuff like i can't buy one of those but can i rent one for a month That'd be cool. Totally. Yeah. I saw a house for rent in the Palisades. It's for the bargain price of $100,000 a month. What? Legit. Wow. I was like, mm. I don't even think I could rent that for an hour. No chance. No. I was like, might be a little out of my price range. Can you call them and ask if they have an hourly rate? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I want to now. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Actually, I went to Doug's house not that long ago. Yeah. Doug lives so far away from anything I've ever been to in my life. 
That's not true. It is. I was wondering if he had electricity. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you get up the mountain and you go through the little cabin, what are you talking about? I just live outside of town. You guys know how when you're like driving and you see the mountains oh so far away, and you're oh, yeah. like, oh, those mountains are so pretty. That's the mountains that have snow on top of them. That's where Doug lives. <laughs> That's right. All the way at those mountains that you yeah. see so far away. Heck yes. Just saying. Yeah. I've paid my dues in LA and I was ready to get out. I mean, he lived, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, but like the air up there is much thinner. <laughs> it's actually the cleanest air in LA County. I'm sure it is. It, it is. I it believe you. It's as such. Why wouldn't it be? It's right by the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Amazing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really far away. <laughs> <laughs> not, not from me. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a, funny problem about LA to me is when, you know, my mom was on the West side and my dad was in the Valley. It was, you know, an hour to get to and from, and you know, you go to the East coast an hour gets you across like three different States. It's so crazy. Right? Yeah. Literally. Yeah. It's wild. And not to mention on a lot of East coast cities, you've got good public transportation where you can get on a train and, yep. you know, in an hour you can be there. I mean, I lived in DC for a while. I had a buddy in Philly and just took a train and I was there. God forbid we had that. Yeah. It, no, just never has worked well in LA. Nope. Oh, well. Oh, well. So we stay in our little <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> I knew you were going to say bubbles. Yep. You love the bubble. I love the bubble. You know, I remember I loved bubble gum as a kid. Yeah. Loved it. Like, I mean, I didn't care what kind, if it was- Big bubble, League Chew. Big League Chew was great, especially when I was playing ball or Hubba Bubba uh, or Double Bubble. Oh, the, yeah. Right? The little ones that came in, in the single pack, yeah. the single things. Fruit right? Stripe. Fruit Stripe gum. There was Bubble Yum, Bubblelicious. Uh, uh, what was the yellow? Juicy Fruit. Juicy Fruit. Remember Chules? No. Chules was the one where if you bit into it, you got the burst oh, of fruit flavor yeah. in your mouth. Right. So good. Yeah. As opposed to like Trident uh, and Carefree. Horrible. Yeah. Those were like diet gums. <laughs> But I used to always be smacking them, try to get a whole pack in my mouth at a time and blow a bubble as big as my head. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I remember trying to fit a whole pack of Big League Chew in my mouth. <laughs> that was a horrible idea. I grew up like loving baseball players with the big wad of tobacco in their mouth. Mm -hmm. and, like, of course, as a kid, I wasn't going to chew tobacco, but it was gum, Big League Chew, or shredded coconut. Because that was like tobacco to right. me. So I'd have a big bag of shredded coconut that we get from like the health food store. Of course you did. So it wasn't even sweetened, right? <laughs> gross. It, was like, it was totally gross. And I would just put a big wad of shredded, unsweetened coconut in mm -hmm. my mouth. And it was, you know, me being able to be a real big league ball player. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds disgusting. super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah. My 10 year old self was stoked. You know? That's right. Yeah. Okay, so what you are about to hear is a scripted conversation. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> it's an actual session with Andrew. And if you're just joining us, we've been talking to Andrew more recently about having a conversation with his brother, who he's been estranged from for the last 10 years. His brother has a bachelor party and wedding coming up. And what you're going to get to hear today in this session is just the idea of having that conversation of being authentic and, and all the things that get in the way of, of being authentically yourself and, and having a conversation when we build it up to this big worry or this big thing that you have to do or deal with and break it all down. Can you just actually pick up a phone and have a conversation? So pick up your proverbial phone and listen to us having a conversation on my couch. We'll be back in a little bit. I feel guilty. I didn't call my brother. No, it's that's okay. My, that's my first thing I, I guess I want to talk about. Sure. Because it's been on my mind and like, I don't know why I did it. You know, I, I don't have a, oh, this is the reason. This is how I was feeling. This is why. It was just kind of, I just didn't, I might write him a letter because it's a little bit more personable and, mm -hmm. and I think I can really, I can sit and think about it. You know, and when I put pen to paper, I feel like that's where my emotion is like right there versus the, the quick text or, or a phone call of of talking more in the moment. Right. You know, I really want to take time with it and develop like what I want to say. So yeah. that's kind of that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Yeah. So I, I support you with whatever you do. Yeah. 
pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I think writing a letter is great because that's a great way to get your emotion out there. Like, mm-hmm. And I would say go through once, get it all out there. Because mm-hmm. part of the hesitation you might have is I don't know what I want to say. Yeah. You know, I've got some idea, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. And if yeah. you remember the spectrum of the camping dude with all the gear and the green beret, like mm-hmm. we're trying to be fully prepared. Right. And a letter is safe. Yeah. You can take your time, you can edit, you can put it together, mm-hmm. you can send it, and there's no disputing any of it. It's just there it is, right? Yeah. I think, you know, I saw when you were saying like a phone call being in the moment, mm-hmm. right? You know, there was a little like hesitation that's, and what I picked up was, and you're nodding now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's, there's something seemingly unsafe about that. Yeah. And uncertain. Yeah. Right. Which is one of the things we've talked about for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's, uh, cause I've been thinking about it a lot, obviously. I think the unsafe comes from the not being prepared. To me, it's such a big deal that I want, I want to know what I'm saying. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want to kind of black out phase and just spew it all out. Cause right. I, I think that will be a deterrent to a certain extent. Deterrent to what? I think like one of our first sessions, I said I was really bad at compartmentalizing mm-hmm. my thoughts and getting them together and then saying them. Right. Um, whereas like a phone call, I'm just go, 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 talk, 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 talk. And so I think I think that's my hesitation. I don't want to be in the moment for that conversation. Mm-hmm. I really want it to be thought out. Why? What does that, what does that give you? Both it, ways. Yeah. Being it, thought out, what does that provide you? And being in the moment, what does that do to you? Yeah, I think um, I think being in the moment is raw. You know, it, it's complete raw emotion. Whereas the letter, the planned out, allows me to kind of, okay, to your point, editing. I can put everything in my thoughts on a piece of paper. Right. And then I can read it and read it back to myself and be like, is this really what I want to say? Yeah. And then that way I can be like, okay, yeah, this, this is what I want to get across. And right. this is like the main points I want to make. Yeah. Whereas in phone calls, I feel like separate from my brother, just in general. Sure. I'm very much so in the moment. And if you ask me a question, I'll tell you how I'm feeling right then and there. Not necessarily take a step back. How do I really feel? Right. Whereas I can do that with a letter. You know, I can, I can put it all out, read it back to myself. I'm like, ah, maybe I didn't really feel that's not true. You know, yeah. or I can kind of edit it to make it the wording that I want it to be. Why is that important to you, the wording and how you want it to be? It, somebody told me when I was a kid, you tell the same thing to 10 different people and all 10 are going to hear it differently. True. And so me kind of knowing my brother and who he is and, and, and how he perceives things, mm-hmm. I want to come across on his level, find his gear mm-hmm. and, and get to that point, not coming from where I want to, like just rod, this is how I feel, take it as what it is. You know, I kind of want to meet him there on that level. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I think the best way to do that is to sit down, think about it, write a letter, hmm. get all my emotion out raw. Right. That, and even just jot down notes of how I'm feeling at the time. Yeah. And then take those notes as a brainstorm and then develop something more intellectually keen on, on what he would perceive. I mean, I, I certainly hear something in all this. Yeah. Uh, I hear a few things in all this. Mm-hmm. It's wanting to know myself. Yeah. I want to know myself. I want to write an emotional, perhaps, draft of the letter, read it back, Mm -hmm. and and really, you know, my own checks and balances, see if that's really what I wanted to communicate, really what I'm feeling, and even see how I feel saying that and Mm -hmm. reading that, Mm -hmm. right? So really getting all that worked out, Mm -hmm. which is something we can do, too. You can bring it in here. We can run through it and see what comes up for you, Yeah. right? Yeah. So knowing myself sounds like a big motivator for you. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that you kind of put that next to, kind of juxtapose that with how it might be taken. Right. Right? Which is something we actually don't have any control over. Right. Right. Because right? I think that's a what if. Totally. It, it falls in that category of like, what if he takes it this way? Or right. what if he reads it that way? Absolutely. And, and that's the, you know, the sheet that I gave you. Yeah. Everybody's thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a bit of the mind reading, mm-hmm. trying to think how he's going to think mm-hmm. or trying to read his mind with how he might take it. So then I'll adjust how I am and how I talk. Right. 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 And that's the heart of the Green Beret. He didn't adjust shit. <laughs> yeah, he just right? goes, yeah. He's just him. Yeah. And it comes from, I really know me. Right. The gearhead. Mm-hmm 
doesn't know himself at all mm-hmm. without the gear, without the prep, without this here, without every contingency plan already made, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Put him in the middle of the desert, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. not going to make it. <laughs> right. Right. Green Bray is going to be like, cool, I'll just take a bite of that cactus, <laughs> and get some water from it. It's all good. Right. Yeah. Like I said, that's a spectrum. Mm-hmm. So part of what I hear you talking about is I want to, I want to do a little bit of gear stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to write the letter. I want to. I want to gather my emotions. Be ready so that I can be more green beret, mm-hmm. perhaps in the moment. Yeah, because I still hear something about you that's avoiding the moment, mm-hmm. avoiding being the moment because I don't know how I'm going to be. Don't want to black out. Yeah, I don't want to say something emotional and not have it come across well. Yeah, yeah, right, definitely. And, yeah. and I think this is a good prequel to the wedding because I, I know that's going to be a lot of. Uh, the Green Beret side of things. Right. And I, I think, to your point, now I'm preparing to get to that Green Beret side. Mm, yep. But this is my gear <laughs> for that. Yeah. And the gear is almost bringing unconscious to conscious, bringing internal to external, going, I want to know how I really feel and what I really want to say. Yeah. Right? In fact, I have a feeling <laughs> that you'll go through the process of writing the letter and knowing what you really want to say, knowing yourself and, and all the emotions with it, and then you'll pick up the phone and call. Yeah. Because there's something, you know, and I'll, I'll even go back to one of the first things you said to me today. I feel guilty mm-hmm. that I didn't call. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm, I'll go back to that, dig into that in a second. But that idea for you, I think, is rooted in what you originally were intending by going to the wedding at all. Mm-hmm. Is I want a connection with my brother. We might have nothing in common. Mm-hmm. And we might just be like, all right, whatever, we're blood. But... Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. I think that idea of I want in 10 years, I want to have a a solid connection with him. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Not I want to send him a Christmas card every year. Right. So that idea of connection is about a a two way communication. Mm -hmm. Right now, easier and safer to write the letter. But like you said, we've got some gear to work out. We got some stuff to do. Right. The guilt thing is interesting. Why are you feeling the guilt? I feel, I don't think I let you down, but I feel like I let myself down in a sense. How so? Because I've seen what I, the conversation I have with my dad, how how good it went, and, and I had that, but I think I reverted right back to the, oh, what's it, what's it really gonna be? Right. And so I feel like I took a step back versus keep moving forward. Yeah. Which I feel guilty about that because it's like, I am making progress and I am doing good and we are we're making steps, you know. And so yeah. like, I feel like I need to do my part too. You know, and, and like, even though it's like tough and like something I didn't necessarily want to do, mm-hmm. I still feel like I should have. Your face right now, I mean, your face right now, it's it's really interesting watching you because yeah. you look somewhat defeated and mm-hmm. somewhat like, like you said, you let yourself down, not you let me down, but you mm-hmm. have that look and it's mm-hmm. almost like that guilt and shame mm-hmm. face. I love guilt sometimes mm-hmm. because it often shows us the roadmap to our integrity because mm-hmm. it tells us, here's what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And it was hard and I didn't, mm-hmm. right? And if we can mm-hmm. hold that sentiment, means my integrity says this is something I really wanted to do. Yeah. And, and it's hard. It's hard because I think I need to do it right. Yeah. I need to do it, you know, and, and what does right mean? So that idea of, yeah, I didn't do it, to me isn't defeat. It's, yeah, here's another opportunity for courage because we're talking about something that's really hard yeah. and scary mm-hmm. and uncertain. And my intention is I really want to. Yeah. That's where your integrity is. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Yeah, no, I, I think that's the Yoda voice talking in a Darth Vader sense because like, I feel guilt, shame, all, all of that. But I think it's nice to hear the, the integrity part, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it, it genuinely is something I want to do. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. isn't like a random conversation. Like, like I put time and like effort into this. And like, I think my question for myself is like why I didn't I you know like where where was that line where like I was too busy or I didn't make the time or or like at what point because I was were those the reasons I was too busy I didn't make time were those the, the reasons I, I didn't was, do it? I was too busy because I didn't want to do it I made myself busy exactly you know and so I was so hyped up last week when I walked out of here yeah I'm gonna call my brother it's gonna be such a good conversation I can't wait to talk to him right Day goes by, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Another day goes by, oh, it's Friday, I'm going, I'm going out. Right. Oh, I didn't yep. get to it. 
Yep. And then in our heads, we're, we're kind of going, oh, I, yeah, because I need this gear. I need to prepare this way. I need to make sure of this. And a lot more of the uncertainty yep. and the anxiety mm -hmm. creeps in. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that you were thinking about it ever present on your mind. Yeah. You know, it might have even been like a tossing and turning at night or waking up thinking about mm -hmm. because it's that gearhead. It's that I need all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I felt like I was preparing for a presentation. Absolutely. You know, like that, that yeah. is the anxiety that I felt. And yep. I just felt like I was so underprepared that I'd rather just not show up to the event. Right. Like, like the presentation totally. event than totally. anything else. Right. And that's, that's not too busy. That's fear. Yeah. And that's uncertain, unsafe, you mm -hmm. know not prepared, mm -hmm. right? I mean, <laughs> I stayed home from school for a month in ninth grade because mm -hmm. I didn't write a paper, wasn't prepared for something. And it was, I mean, serious, a month. Like I was putting the thermometer against the light bulb and like, <laughs> and like showing my dad, just just hot enough to stay home, but not so hot I had to go to the doctor. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right? We all do versions of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Rarely are we kind of born the green beret and just walk into something feeling self-assured like i got this right right yeah if you had that you would have already talked to him yeah we're also building something up as when i call him it's going to be that talk yeah it might not be right you know there's there's and you just right. softened right yeah whatever you said what happened right there well because we could talk about anything it could be and it could be how the weather, you know, like what what are you doing today? It could sure. be anything. Sure. But if you called him right now, <laughs> yeah. are you gonna get into it with them? Because mm -hmm. his mind's probably preoccupied on something else coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got a big weekend. Yeah. And what would you say to a guy who's got a big weekend coming up? Just wanted to check in, make sure you're all right. Hope you have a good weekend. Talk to you later. And and that's all it takes sometimes. Yeah. You know, you could even do that and go the, yeah, you know, I really would love to reconnect. And, and you know, when you get done with the bachelor party, mm -hmm. you know, shoot me a text and then let's, you know, find some time to talk. Yeah. That's also liberating and scary because mm -hmm. it's that, that same thing every girl that ever has said to you, we need to talk. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Never goes well. Uh -uh. Right. Never. So it might not want, but I'm, I'm saying that we could do that. It might feel like we're hiding something if we just do that. Hey, man, what's up? Hope you have a great weekend. Like, have a good time. Just checking in. All right. Mm -hmm. Peace. That's like, oh, I didn't tell him this bomb I'm going to drop off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But we build it up as something so big and so huge. Yeah. And that's the thing that we get scared of, afraid mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. avoid, make ourselves busy so we don't have to face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're thinking about it all the time. Right. Right? Yeah. So what do we do with that? Let's got to do it. You know, well, it's easy. I mean, and here we are again, yeah, like, right? Yeah, like, we're, yeah. we're in here. Yeah. You're motivated. You're like, yeah, fucking A. I'm going to call him right now. Yeah. Like, I'll do it. No, no, I'll do it. Check me out. Yeah. Like, that's just getting motivated for something. Feeling prepared, Green Beret style, not being prepared gearhead style, mm -hmm. but feeling that preparation, mm -hmm. feeling that like, no, I'm prepared by virtue of knowing who I am and what I want. And, and it might not come out perfectly rehearsed. I might not stick to the script. Yeah. I know my intention and I know what I want to convey. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. you know, and you're nodding and well, yelping like. And, and I think, I think it didn't have to do with my brother. You know, I, I think it has to do with me and myself and me, myself being okay. Yeah. And like, no matter where that conversation goes, that I'm still okay. And having that kind of confidence is more important than, oh, what's the conversation going to be? Man, that's fucking huge. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. Yeah, because I and like I know I struggle with my own confidence levels on every on every spectrum. You know, any anything there is, like I kind of struggle with that. And so when something big like this happens, or is again, it's gonna happen. My first initial reaction is, what what's gonna happen to me? You know, where am I gonna fall into this? Like, what what happens if we don't have a conversation and then I don't go to the wet? Like. Like down that rabbit hole, down that what if game. Yeah, right? yeah, yep. totally. And, and then, and then my confidence kind of goes with it, versus the opposite of of now nah, it'll be okay. You know, and, and training myself to kind of think in, in the other way of coming out of it. But I I think my struggle right now is like the self the self hype only gets me so far. Well, and that's why you know I kind of went like, all right, well we're motivated in here now. Yeah, but that's. That's nice. It's also mm -hmm. bullshit. Right. 
right? Because mm-hmm. that is self hype. Mm-hmm. I'm not a hype man. Right. You know, I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not Flavor Flav. If you remember him, yeah. Right. It's I'm not the hype man. Right. Right. I'm I'm the accurate thinker guy. Right. You know, I'm not even Mr. Positive. So, like you were just saying, like, yeah, I go down that rabbit hole. That's the what if game, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Those are all the negative things. And then you'll think, well, how can I flip it the other way? Okay, we can do that. And I've told you, like, yeah, the what if game. It's that's the only time I think positive mm-hmm. to balance out the negative, right? Mm-hmm. To bring a little Yoda to that Vader voice, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's cool when it's used to balance that. Not when it's used to hype yourself to just motivate to like now I'm going to go do it, right? Yeah. That's overcompensating for yeah. something. And finding that that middle mm-hmm. is what you said in the middle of all that, actually, <laughs> which is, you know, knowing that I'm okay, yeah. right? That's not the opposite of it's going to go badly or this could happen or, or those what ifs. Knowing I'm going to be okay is actually middle because even if it does go badly, I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. If it goes great, I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be okay is the root. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, the result. Yeah. And I, I think, too, like something I've been pondering is like, what does okay mean? Mm. Because, I mean, even still going through shit and it's like, okay, I tell myself I'm okay, but I'm still going through that shit. And like, I, I don't know if this is like right or wrong or indifferent or, or somewhere in between. But the, the thought that kind of aroused in my head was I'm not okay. And that's okay. Oh, I like that. Because, yeah, yeah. Because like, I know I'm not okay, and I know I'm going through it, and that's okay because I'll be okay. And so I think that's like what's been kind of, and I've been thinking about that kind of like line for like a couple of days now, mm. and it was almost like empowering because I was like, I'm not okay. That's okay. Let's keep right. going. Let's right. keep making it happen. Let's, let's keep yeah. going. Yeah even though I'm not okay right now. I love that. I absolutely love that because that's a way of validating what you're experiencing, what you're feeling is. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I would refine it a little bit for myself. I'm not saying you need to do this at all Mm because it's working Mm -hmm. that I don't feel okay, but I am okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't feel safe right now. Mm -hmm. I am though. Yeah. It's a version of allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. I go, and that's okay. Yeah. I don't feel okay, and that's okay to feel that way. And I feel like it, it also helps me. I mean, you said it, it, it's validating how I'm feeling, yeah. which I think I've overlooked doing that my entire life hmm. because I've normalized the shit, and I never really felt how I felt going through it and being like, okay, this is why I feel like this. You're going to be okay. It was like, a, no, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry. I'm fine. And so now it's like, okay, yeah, no, I'm not all right. This is how I feel right now. This is why I feel like this. And like, yeah, you're going to be all right. Right. And and I think that's the biggest like thing I've missed and for a long time is validating how I'm actually feeling good or bad. Right. You know, because I feel like when good stuff happens, I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't real. Like, we're going to go back to shit anyway. Right. You know, I, I'm not really enjoying the good. Yeah. And then on the flip side, when it gets really shitty, it's like, a, oh, yeah, this is normal. Like, right. all right. And, and to our conversation a couple of weeks ago of slowing down, yep. of realizing, oh, OK, this isn't very good, but it'll be OK. And, and going through it and experiencing it. Right. Same with the good. You know, I, I think saying I'm OK in the good, too, mm-hmm. helps me realize when I'm going through shit that it's going to get better. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's so nice to hear you come into this and, and actively reminding yourself like, right, this is OK to mm-hmm. not feel OK, but validating that. And that hasn't been your experience for good and bad. Mm-hmm. Right. As you've been saying, I'm OK. I'm OK. It's fine. It's fine. I wonder who you're saying that to. Right? Myself. Yeah. You're wanting to remind yourself mm-hmm. that you're OK. But in doing that, like you said, you've sort of invalidated any feelings of really bad or really good Mm -hmm. just just keep this level have it be okay have it be okay i'll survive yeah and that's sort of like what we were talking many weeks ago about being at that that threat level orange like like that yeah fight or flight's right there Mm -hmm. you're still locked in that mode Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and unlocking that is going to be huge yeah and a big part of that is what we're talking about now and how you're talking about this Mm -hmm. just going wait i'm okay and it's okay to feel not okay yeah right huge distinction i'd love yeah. this for you yeah. it's 
it's going to let you validate what your experience of something is. So remembering you're human too. Mm -hmm. That's why you didn't call him. Yeah. You're human. Yeah. Got a little scared. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how it was going to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all my points of reference, like just in general, you know, like friends, family, people, generally speaking, I've never walked into a conversation like that mm. and came out of it in a good way. It's wow. it's always been one me feeling guilty or not having that relationship anymore mm. or or feeling discouraged to an extreme extent. Mm. You know, so I've never had that point of reference where like I've had not I don't even have a problem with my brother. You know, it's just like I haven't talked to him and I don't know him. You know, and going over the last 10, 15 years, it's like there's a problem, but it's not between me and him, I don't think. And so I just I don't know what that looks like. I have no idea what a good outcome is. Yeah, that's pretty telling. Yeah. And that's, this is new territory. It's like we were talking about mm -hmm. the, new, the new trails that you get to carve, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I go, yeah, I'm going out of bounds with this. Yeah. I haven't been there before. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that means it's going to be new and different. Yeah. Which can be scary, mm -hmm. can be exciting. Mm -hmm. We just go, okay. And it's new and different. We don't need to let Vader come in and remind us of something familiar and go this way and, mm -hmm. and lure us into a dark side view of things. Yeah. We just go, oh, right. This is uncomfortable because it's new and different. I'm creating a new point of reference that mm -hmm. I haven't had before. I don't know how the conversation is going to go with my brother. Right. If I script it and I stick to at least my side of the script, Mm -hmm. and I send that to him, then I know. Mm -hmm. I know exactly how it's going to go because I curated the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? And I see mm -hmm. you smiling. Yeah. Like, yeah, no shit, Doug. That's why I wanted to do that. It's safer, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, right. way safer. Yeah, feels way safer for sure. Yeah. And I think that what doesn't feel safe is that I don't have the frame of reference for it going well. Mm -hmm. So it's unknown, completely unknown. It's way out of bounds trail. Mm -hmm. And the guilt is how I really want to be. Mm -hmm. And even in some of those, like you said, all those conversations I've had haven't gone well, and I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. My guess is some of the guilt is because I didn't really get to say what I wanted to say or that wasn't heard in some way. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel like even outside of my brother, I feel like I have that thought a lot. Where oh I, I didn't get I didn't get to say what I wanted to say or I didn't say it the way I wanted to say it I feel like I I walk away from the majority of conversations of like ah I, I should have said it this way or ah I, I should have taken this approach versus being okay with what I did say being able to just kind of be like hey this is where I'm at this is how I'm feeling and, yeah that's that's very much knowing yourself mm -hmm. is a lot of where that comes from yeah in the moment in situations that will often get challenged mm -hmm. and it's i think of a lot of sports teams that have a game plan their x's and o's they've been working on all week or mm -hmm. all day whatever it is mm -hmm. and they go in and they're getting their asses kicked yeah right halftime invariably almost every coach will say we got away from our game plan yeah we need to execute our game i think that idea of what the game plan is that's where your foundation and, and solid integrity is mm -hmm. but knowing that root is knowing yourself but knowing your game plan yeah. that it's yeah what do i want here and is that okay yeah right not how are they going to take it mm -hmm. it's not being selfish it's listening to yourself yeah and I, I don't i don't think i do that i don't i don't i think i'm really struggling with knowing who i am and knowing what i stand for mm. to kind of put it in a sentence i don't really know who i am at the end of the day i have no idea i know how i want to be i know who i kind of like see myself being yeah. but i don't know who i am hmm. how is that saying that i think it's uh it's like 10 percent liberating and like 90 percent really really scary yeah that sounds about right yeah and the liberating part awesome mm -hmm. we can follow that and go right well, you just said that to your therapist. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in the right place for that, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's something we'll walk through and we'll kind of strengthen and, and figure out and maybe flip the percentages the other way. Mm -hmm. Like we've done before with some yeah. things, right? Yeah. Like when we're talking obligation to it, like, well, that flipped like that. Yeah. It might not be that fast because it, it's yeah. about really knowing yourself mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to be as you are. Mm -hmm. Also allowing yourself to be human because we're going to make mistakes. Right. 
you're gonna skin your knees sometimes and scream bloody fucking murder. Yeah. Like shit, that hurt. Help me out, you know. Mm -hmm. And whatever it might be, that's got to be okay. We got to have room for that. Yeah. You know, you're gonna blow it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, we know this. And it's funny because like I tell myself that, you know, and I'm like, I know I'm human. I know I'm gonna make mistakes, and like, it, it's okay. Yeah. But when I make a mistake, it's like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, what? Why? Why did you do that? How come? analyze 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 figure out where i went wrong so i don't do it again yeah. you know versus just the oh yeah i made a mistake it's okay yeah and that's that's you know that'll be where vader draws his power yeah right mm -hmm. and it'll totally fuck with us yeah i mean baseball I yeah i've told you this the yeah. best baseball players fail 70 percent <laughs> of the time when they come to the plate yeah they go to the hall of fame exactly which is just crazy it's nuts yeah. right we are moving towards this stuff even that idea of i don't know who i am mm -hmm. we can find that mm -hmm. that's not just your integrity that's that's who you are yeah which is partly how you are yeah i think i'm very sure of what i do know but i don't know a lot you know and, right. I, and i think i'm very confident in the areas that i can be confident in yeah. And I'm very, very scared in, in the majority of stuff that I don't know. I want to kind of be more, more vulnerable in the not knowing and letting people know, yeah, dude, I don't know that much. I'm, I'm not as smart as I should be. I think I don't want people to see my vulnerability as, oh, he isn't good enough. Coming back to that again, right. which is why it's such a struggle for me to open up and that, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea who I am. I would say, too, you know? I have no idea who I am. Well, I have an idea of who I am, mm -hmm. but I don't have a solid foundation of that that I can feel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If we get that, which we will, mm -hmm. there's the confidence. Not the arrogance, the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's a big difference between Huge. those two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Arrogance is when I actually don't know. I'm just faking it or just doing it. Right? Right. And that's, you know, I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> um, when I worked in the music business... Uh, this is back in the 90s before the internet. Well, the internet mm -hmm. might have been there, but <laughs> no smartphones, no, none of that shit. Mm -hmm. And you had to know all the indie bands, right? Because right? if you didn't, you lost your cred, right. right? So people would be talking and they'd be like, oh, did you hear the new Boston Dixon? You hear the new Sleater Kinney? And you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. He's great. I'm like, what? Yes. As soon as I was able to admit that I didn't know, mm -hmm. and I go, no, that's Sleater Kitten. I've never heard of them. Who do they sound like? Mm -hmm. What did it tell me about them? Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this huge burden and weight got lifted off of me. Because yeah. that pressure of having to know was gone. Right. And I sort of flipped it like, oh, no, tell me about them. Like, yeah, educate me, like you said, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Educate me. Give it to me. No problem. Yeah. I just haven't heard of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So saying I don't know became okay. Yeah. Actually became a strength. Mm -hmm faking it sucked yeah that i don't know thing it, it's it's interesting because we don't like saying it mm -hmm. when we can say it when we can admit it that's the vulnerability becoming strength mm -hmm. not the weakness that we're hiding from yeah yeah when, I, when i'm listening to you the the other thing that kind of like connected yeah was the i'm not okay and, and that's okay yeah. i don't know tell me about it right. you know i, I feel like those go hand in hand and yeah, the two different things, but the same thing, you know, yeah. and, and not knowing is okay too, you know, because like, I'm never going to know everything. There's only going to be somebody better and that's okay. Hmm. Like, that's okay. Better is also subjective. Right. Right. And that's true. Right. There are plenty of better therapists out there, mm -hmm. you know, a lot. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> there are a few that are worse, maybe, <laughs> um, but it's what works for who's here. Right. And how am I the best me that I can be? Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. and well, and, and the first thing that I just thought of was um, me surrounding myself with certain people to almost gain the perception of having knowledge. Right. If that makes sense. Totally does. Versus me laying the groundwork for myself and building myself up. And I think the mark of somebody putting a group of people together is are they secure enough in themselves that they can put people that are, you know, air quoting better than mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. around them mm -hmm. so that it elevates them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we're just putting them out there so I'll look good. Right. That's a different story. Yeah. I feel like that's arrogance. Yeah. That's totally. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. And it's hopefully 
teaching you that it's okay to go, right, I'm not the best. Am I the best me I can be? Mm -hmm. Knowing I'm going to be human and make mistakes. And is it okay to not know? Mm -hmm. To some degree, I want to know. That's why I want to write this letter out and have that preparedness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But at some point, I'm going to ditch the letter or send it. We'll see. <laughs> and just pick up the phone because I know who I am, at least in that respect. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll get there. It might still be scary because, uh oh, how's he going to respond? And that might put an undue stress on you. Like, I need to figure this out before I do anything else. Because it'll never be perfect. No. It just won't. You know, I feel like I'm more confident in knowing that it's not going to be perfect. And it's not going to, you're not going to, like, I won't know until it actually happens and we get through it and, and figure out what to do with that, you know? And, and yeah. I, I think that's more safe than just not knowing yeah it's giving yourself permission yeah yeah it's validating the ability to not know yeah you totally know? yeah yeah it's uh, i like that see that that's that's you're building it right there man yeah you really are hell yeah and welcome back <laughs> What did I think? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. Oh, that's right. Amazing. Gosh, I can't remember. This one is chock full of good stuff. Is it? It is. Uh, sometimes. I mean, immediately, first thing. I feel really guilty. Oh, yeah. He was, was like vomited out of his mouth. Right. And pretty much, you remember when we talked about people saying, I mean, is there chit chat at the beginning of the session? Yeah. When he started and said, sometimes we start writing... That's pretty much right. He said, right. What he said off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I feel so guilty. I didn't call my brother. Right. My first thought was guilty to who? Like right. whom, who, whom? <laughs> to whom are you feeling guilty? Oh, thank you. About whom are you feeling guilty? I, yeah. I don't know. Oh, damn it. So that was my first thought. Right. Which I believe you followed up with later. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Drew. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. But like in a, in a, in a endearing way. I think I know where you're going. This is Meredith getting charged up. A little bit. Yeah. Let me change my position here. Yeah. Reposition. The um, charge. No, Go just an it. endearing way. Cause I can totally relate. So uh, I feel really guilty. I didn't call my brother, but you know what? I decided to write him a letter. Right. And I was like, mm, oh, Drew. Right. Right. Little Drew, Drew, Drew. Right. And this is something I know hits you. Cause you're like all about organizing your thoughts and really getting it out. Yeah. And you know, I think for him that the letter is a way to do that, right? Totally. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I heard you, I heard your pause. <laughs> I heard your total support. Right. Right. And then, you know, by the end of the session, I heard you say, well, we'll write that letter and we'll see if you send it out. Right. Thinking like, are you going to write it? To write it. Right. And to like have you write it out and see what you get out of writing it. And then we'll see if you actually then make the phone call or you send it. Right. But yeah, so I sort of heard that pause and I heard you being like processing his new idea. Right. Of writing the letter. Right. Not judging it. Right. Just processing it. Sure. And I thought to myself, hey, Drew, you remember last week when it was no big deal? Right. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, mm, well, maybe and, it's a little more of a big deal. And then we and we build these things up, and it's it's funny because me and my pop culture references, although this is way out of date. There's a movie with Sean Connery, and I don't remember who was a kid then. He's not a kid anymore. I think it was called uh, Finding Forrester, and it was mm -hmm. um, Sean Connery as this reclusive, brilliant author, and the kid was a a new writer, you know, and it was a an African American kid at a hoity-toity private school. And Sean Connery's lesson to him was the first draft you write is emotional. Just write. We'll edit it later. Just get it all out. You know, if you remember the previews for that movie, it was when Sean Connery was like, you're the man now, dog. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but that idea of just get that, get that draft out. And that's, you know, very first session with Drew was just spew it all yeah. out. We'll make sense of it. So I liked seeing or hearing about him wanting to write a letter because it's the progression. Yep. We're not going to get right there right away, but him going, I've got all these thoughts that I want to get out with brother. And that's, you know, keeping me from having the conversation. 
a letter is a way to get all that out there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. You picked up, I don't think he's going to send that letter. I think that's a way of organizing his thoughts that he's coming to on his own. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, you know, okay, so he was saying, well, he doesn't want to be in the moment because when he's in the moment, he says exactly what he thinks. And I'm like, okay, okay, well. Or he blacks out. That's right. Right. That's, that's not a necessarily a bad thing. And he feels like in the moment, it might not be like big picture accurate. What I thought was amazing. And again, coming back to my DBT. So he was talking about how he knows his brother and he wants to approach it in a way basically where his brother can hear it was right. sort of what he was saying. Right. Right. Um, I want to gear it towards him. Yes. Yeah. And that is so important if you approach it in the right way. So it's not about catering to his brother. It's not about becoming someone else than who he actually is. It's about knowing what his brother will be able to hear and be receptive to. So, you know, in DBT, we call that just effective communication. We have an acronym called dear man, Mm, which break it down. Well, and I might, I'll just show it to you. Oh. Also, but in Dear Man, we lo- the the whole point of something every time you have a communication like this is what is my objective? Right. So I would say to Drew, so what is your objective in the phone call? Right. What is it? Right. What's your objective in the letter? What what is it that you want to get out of it? Right. And I'm I'm guessing he would just say, well, uh, I want to have a better relationship. No, that's not your objective in the phone call. Right. What is it? Right. So there's three things usually. Objective, it's relationship effectiveness, objective effectiveness, and self-respect effectiveness. Which means what? So, you know, I'm driving through McDonald's. My objective is just to get my hamburger. That's all I care about. Right. I don't care if the lady, like, is a total bitch to me. Whatever. I don't care. I don't want her to spit in my burger. That's it. That's my objective. Right. So self-respect effectiveness would be... Like, I want my burger, but if this lady's a bitch to me, like, I'm going to say something. Yeah, that that one to me is the, you know, the 12-steppers do the make sure your side of the street is clean, right? Like, take care of yourself first, right? Right, right. And then the relationship effectiveness is like, okay, well, you know, I know this woman well. I want my hamburger and I my self-respect is important, but I don't want to fuck up this relationship. Right. Right. And it's not always one or the other. So with Drew, right. I think in this in this situation, one of the most most important things is the relationship effectiveness. Right. So, but for him, he also needs to know what is his objective, what is his goal going into this communication, the phone call, the letter. It's not about. It doesn't seem like this point. It's not about telling him he's not going. Right. He already knows he's not going. Right. 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 So what is it? Right. And that's, that's, you know, we're trying to break that down because it's don't want to get too far ahead of yourself with what, you know, what your overall objective is like, okay, that might be your overall, but what's your objective in this moment, yep. in this phone call? Yeah. Right. And totally. it's even something I, I think I told him in this episode was, you know, the acting version of that is what's my motivation, mm-hmm. but it's, what's my motivation in this scene. So I can be present in this scene, right. not what's my character's motivation in act two, right. you know, and the resolve way out there. Right. It's looking at right now. And I think we did break it down well enough so that he was able to say that what he wants is not to actually have the conversation with his brother about seeing each other differently or having a real relationship. It's being able to say, I'd like to have that conversation. Right. 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 So it's almost his objective is just to start a conversation with his brother, not to have the conversation and resolve it. It's to start a conversation about nothing, basically, is what he said. He said he sort of started laughing and you were like, what? And he said, I just realized we could literally fucking talk about nothing and it would be fine. Just to talk. Right. Yeah. It's something... um, Somebody asked uh, us a while ago, what does his brother say happened that night? Or what was his brother's perspective? We don't know. You know, we absolutely don't know. And I, I think that's something that Drew doesn't know. Drew can't know yet. And it's not about like, 
replaying that and getting his brother's side of it. Now, his brother might not be there. His brother might not have held on to that at all. Right. For all we know, his brother's perspective might be, I was trying to protect Drew from that responsibility to our mom and right. I wanted to help him be his own person and all that. We have no idea. Right. Right. And it's not answering all those questions right now with writing a letter or having a phone call with him. It's just going, hey, man, I, I just want to have some connection with you. So I wonder what after that, because then he still was like, I'm going to write the letter, even though at some point he said, yeah, in in a phone call, it could literally just be like, bro, have a good weekend. Right. So I wonder what the letter is going to be about. Is it just maybe to get his feelings out? Totally. It's, okay. it's that organization of, of thought and feeling. It's, right. it's instead of spewing it or instead of feeling, I think what he was saying was, I need to do this using one of my analogies. I need to do this gearhead style preparing to be the Green Beret, right? Right. Because the Green Beret is having that self-confidence, is knowing I can handle the situation. Right now, it's not about brother. It's about Drew. He doesn't know that he could handle a conversation because he doesn't know what he wants to say. And that's why being in the moment is so scary to him because he doesn't know all of his thoughts. He doesn't know all of his feelings. He's not aware of them and he hasn't really been able to process them and go, here are the ones that are important for me to say. Here are the ones I need to work on without him. So right. getting to that point and writing a letter to just, you know, to his point, spew it all yeah. out, get it out there, then kind of sift through it, right? I didn't understand the Green Beret analogy. It was the, if there are two guys that you can go camping with. One oh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you got it, okay. right? Yes, yes, The yes. guy with all the gear or the Green Beret who can yeah. kill a bear with a blade of grass. Got it. Who do you want to go with? Right. And being on that spectrum of preparing and not preparing. Yep, now I remember. Right? You talked about guilt. Yes. And how it can be awesome and how... <laughs> Amazing. You wrote guilt can be awesome. Yeah. I mean, I wrote it. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> True. I and, think. And you called it the roadmap to integrity. That's right. And you said something about like, well, here's what I really wanted to do. And it was hard and I didn't do it. Right. And I love that because yeah. you know how I feel about all emotions. Um, <laughs> there are no negative emotions, contrary to what the article in Psychology Today said. <laughs> Right. right. That's true. You just saw that article. It's like, I'm going to write them a letter. Yep. A letter. There you go again, writing a letter. Ooh. All right. Why don't you just call them? Because <laughs> I need to put all my thoughts down. That's right. That that idea of that roadmap to your integrity, people think like, oh God, I felt so guilty about that. And they see it as such a negative because their perspective is the thing they didn't do. Right. But the the root of the guilt is you actually do know what you wanted to do. And where your integrity and intention and motivation really was, great. Let's look at that and strengthen that, right? And then it becomes almost a positive in terms of a way to strengthen your own integrity or at least see where it is. You might still not be able to, to reach it or embody it, but at least you can see it and you can move towards it if you want to. You can also move away from it and that's your choice too, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk a little bit about justified versus unjustified guilt. There is that sometimes the guilt is unjustified that you're, yeah, there's the whole like no one can make you feel guilty. But sometimes it's hard when you have a Jewish mother who is like, literally, you're killing me. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. And that's, you know, it's, it's funny because that's happening to them and their perspective and they project it onto us. Yes. You know, and... It's hard sometimes if we get that that Jewish mother guilt, or I'm sure other mothers are like sure. that as well, right? We're it, both Jewish, so we can say that. I'm just throwing it out there, you guys know. That's true. Where it's it's a projection of what they're feeling onto us. We didn't, I mean, we don't have to take that guilt. If we're uber secure in ourself and, and confident with how we've been or what our intentions are or what we're doing, then a Jewish mother isn't going to bother us. As much. As much. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> At some point you're still like, you know, I mean, there's movies where like the, the mom lays down in the middle of the street and is like, you might as well just kill me. <laughs> right. Like, I right. mean, it can get extreme. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And it can get very passive and passive aggressive yes. and all of oh, that. Oh God. Right. And it's also something that we can go, right. That might be from their experience and totally. their life experience and it's their thing. And if we can, let go of that yeah. and not have that be something that we take responsibility for because our integrity is, well, that, that isn't my intention. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So one thing that he, Drew said that I was like, what can Doug, like, 
<laughs> could grab onto this one. Fix that. Please. <laughs> right. He said, I walk away from majority of conversations thinking, oh, I didn't say what I wanted to say or didn't come out right. Right. I was like, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Right. I don't know if he really meant sort of like a, what I said before, like reframing the story or, re, you know, did he actually mean the majority of his conversations or is it more the ones that stick in his mind or the, the ones he feels, quote unquote, more important? Yeah, that, that might just be a, another function of not feeling present in yeah. the moment. And that, you know, what he described is that blackout feeling of yeah. not knowing what's going on. And a lot of times when we don't feel okay, we don't feel safe, you know, we flee and something else takes over. It's that autopilot thing that he talked about a yeah. couple of weeks ago, right? And, you know, there was something in here that he said, and I, it, it's a quote that I freaking love and I'm going to use with a bunch of my clients. I'll probably use a ton with him. That idea of, I don't feel okay, or I'm not okay, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Which I loved because that's so many times we think just not being okay or not feeling okay is wrong or is bad. And he was like, he's getting there to, to that place of being comfortable and kind of going, I'm not okay right now. And that's okay. Yeah. It's okay to be not okay. Yeah. Right. And we kind of doubled down on that a little bit, kind of drove that home a few times. And I, I think it's something that will come up as a theme for us where it's him realizing that just because he doesn't feel okay or, or he's getting that trigger, that's not a reason to pull all the alarms and, and go up. Like that's, that's okay. Yeah. Right? No, I liked that he could have that. I don't think everybody could get to that place. Right. You know what I mean? Like we could say it and then maybe five minutes later be like, no, no, I'm really not okay. Right. And then come back to it. You know, it, yeah. it's like a work in progress. I think going back to that, Another thing he said, which is, I don't know who I am. I know who I want to be. What mm. immediately came up for me again was, is that, is that a story he's telling himself? Totally. Is that because, I mean, sure. Like A, he's young. B, he sounds kind of like he knows who he is to some mm. extent in some areas. Right. I think there's some areas he doesn't because he's in the process of changing his life in a lot of ways. Yeah. When he might know who he's been based on how he's been. Yeah, right? that's what you said. Right. right. And like, like knowing who you want to be. I mean, that's pretty fucking awesome. I don't even know what that means necessarily. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. that's like the roadmap to our integrity. Yes. Right. That's yes. where guilt comes from. Like yep. I'm not being who I want to be. Right. Awesome. That means you have an idea of who you want exactly. to be and we can move towards that. Right. right? You haven't been that because it either hasn't been safe to, hasn't been comfortable to, or hasn't been welcomed. So we, we just haven't been that, yeah. but we're, we're learning more and more that we can, and then we'll see what happens when we do. Yeah. And then it might become much more easier, but that right. idea of it's a failure of ourself that we're not being ourself. Right. That's not true. N right. Exactly. Right. And then you guys also talked about, I think it was him that said, there's always someone better. Right. There is. And, <laughs> right. you know, and I think you said, well, better is relevant and which is true. Relative, right? Yep. Thanks. Yeah. I say that to my clients. There's one client specifically who hates when I say that. And I'm like, girl, pff, you're going to have to get used to that. And there's always someone better, or smarter, or better looking or taller or shorter, or whatever it is. There's always going to be. And that has to be OK. And when you talked about but being the best you, best me I can be. Right. That's the point. That's the goal to me because there is no one that's going to be a better you than you. Right. Right. And then you talked about the not knowing. Right. Which is, and I, I totally have changed the same way you have. Right. Where before totally. I was like, uh, yeah, I totally know. Totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah I know yeah, that yeah. band. I know that. <laughs> I've been to that club, that restaurant. And now I'm like, yeah. I, I, I will go the, the opposite way just in case, or also to get more information and learn. I'm like, no, mm -mm. what's that? Yeah. Like, tell remember, me all about it. Remember that one time I said to you, say, who's that Lizzo? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I don't know. I just keep hearing all these wonderful things about her. Right. Right. right? And it becomes a strength instead yep. of a weakness. Like totally. the weakness is, I think when you don't know and pretend you do. And if someone's going to clown me for not knowing, by the way, welcome to fourth grade. 
Well, I, and, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, and go go fuck yourself is like, wow, you must be so insecure that yeah. you need to make me feel inferior so you can feel better about yourself. Yeah. No fourth grader is going to say that, but I mean, <laughs> man, can you imagine if we did? That would be amazing. And we'd get our ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. So, yeah. But overall, just again, such a good session. So chock full of nuts. Yeah. What I what I love that's happening now is that's what she said. What I love that's happening now is that he's taking a lot of what we've been talking about in sessions and applying it to himself, right? Right. And really working on these things. And and some of the things you'll you guys get to hear it because you hear him in session week to week, and you hear how he is shifting how he's thinking about things, how he's applying these things, how, you know, he, he brings up some of the analogies, like he'll say, yeah. And I was thinking, Yoda, where you at? Where you at? You know, I was thinking I I gotta be a little more green beret here. I love that. I know. Awesome that that stuff is It must warm the cockles of your heart. It, I, I didn't know my heart had cockles, but they are burning right now. They do. It does. (laughs) (laughs) I've got burning cockles. Um, (laughs) That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're in trouble now. It, it, it really does feel good because yeah. he's he's taking these things in and applying them and using them and noticing how his life is is starting to change. Yeah. And as we build more and more experience of this, going back to what we were talking about, those neural pathways and the ski trails, figuratively speaking, of course, they're <laughs> becoming safer and safer to go down because yeah. the boulders and the trees are moved out of the way and you can just hit the fresh powder and go, ah, oh, yeah. And then there'll be grooves in there and you get to choose that course, right? So true. Yeah. Love it. Love that it's happening. Yeah. So next week, we're going to look a little bit more at his relationship and talk about some ideas of building his self-confidence, of having compassion for yourself, not just having compassion for others and what that means. And it really all comes from strengthening your sense of self and yourself versus getting that external validation from other people. Sweet. Indeed. Can't wait to hear. I love compassion. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. It's important. It is. Okay. I love passion and compassion. Yes. Yes. Both are good. Great. Awesome. Amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> the best fucking thing ever. Ever. That's right. So stick around. Come back. Go check out yourmentalbreakdown.com. Send us some questions and comments. And uh, we will see you again. No, we won't see you. We never see you. We might see you. We might. You may see us one day soon. You'll definitely get to hear us. Yay. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.